Okay, guys, so I am back to do your uh, notes on quantum numbers. Um, really need to pay attention to the notes on quantum numbers. Now, um, if you go back to the video that I did on filling out the periodic table, you will remember at the bottom of the table, I had you guys fill in uh, some of those, the information about N, L, M, and S. Okay. And I'm going to be going over that a little bit um, in these notes. Um, it's going to be very important because this is going to be how you do quantum numbers. Uh, following this video, I'm going to have a note sheet, a help sheet um, that we're going to go over before you actually do your assignment so that you'll understand how to do everything. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because we're going to be doing notes. Okay. All right. And let me hit present here. Okay, so we are going to be talking about quantum numbers. Okay, so in order to describe the probable location of electrons, they are assigned four numbers. These numbers are called quantum numbers. Okay, they are kind of like the electrons address, where to find the particular electron that you're looking for. And we're going to be looking for valence electrons. Where are these outer electrons located within the region? Okay, so it's kind of like their address, their coding, whichever you want to call it. The principal quantum number describes which orbit the electron is in and therefore how much energy the electron has at the time. It is symbolized by the letter N. So N is called the principal quantum number, which is the row, the last row that you're on. So if you're looking for a particular element, it's that very last thing you write. So earlier we did sodium, and sodium ended at 3s1. So N would be 3 for sodium, because N is the row number in which you stop on. So they're always positive. Positive whole numbers are assigned, not including zero, one, two, and three, et cetera, because it represents the row number for the periodic table. The higher the number, the further the orbit from the nucleus. The higher the number, the more energy the electron has. This is sort of like Bohr's energy levels, okay? And the reason it has more energy is because it's further away from the nucleus. It's not being pulled into the nucleus, okay? So the orbit's energy levels are also called shells. So sometimes they're referred to as shells, okay? Now, the sublevels, or what we call subshells, that occur in each of the levels described above, it is symbolized by the letter L. Now, a lot of times you will see me draw a, a cursive L, because sometimes people get those confused with the number one. So I try to use a cursive L when I'm talking about L, and that's actually how I had you write it on your periodic table. Okay, so we just went over N, which is the principal quantum number, which is the row that you're located in, okay, the very last row that you write from the periodic table. The second one is called letter L, okay. The letter L number values are 0, okay, through 2, all right. So, actually, I think it's through 3, excuse me, not through 2, through 3, okay. Now, what you're doing here is kind of like if you're on a team, and you're on a basketball team. And on this basketball team, you have uh, jersey numbers, right? So you have numbers associated with your jersey so they can identify people. Well, we're gonna look at the um, letter L as your subshells. These are your subshells. So these are the letters that you stop in within the periodic table. So if you stop in S, L is gonna equal zero. If you stop in P, L is gonna be one, D, L is going to be 2, and F, L is going to be 3. So these are like jersey numbers assigned to these values. So they don't change. Anytime you stop an S, L is always going to be 0. P is always going to be 1. D is always going to be 2. And F is always going to be 3. Okay? So each of these numbers represents the shape of a subshell. So if L equals 0, it represents excuse me, represents an S subshell. If L equals 1, it represents a P subshell. If L equals 2, it represents a D subshell. And if L equals 3, it represents an F subshell. The higher the number, the more complex the shape of the subshell. Now, we went over that before, okay? And so when we were going over that, we talked about how um, with these different subshells, 
you have um, a particular shape associated with it. So S is a sphere, like it looks like a globe. Uh, P is a figure eight, okay, kind of looks like two teardrops put together. D represents like a flower, and then um, F represents two flowers put together, okay? Now, all of the subshells described uh, in the slide above have more than one orientation. So the magnetic quantum number describes the orientation of the subshell that the electron is founded. So that's how is that rotating, okay? Uh, we talked a little bit about P. P actually has three different directions, X, Y, and Z. So it will rotate in the X, Y, and Z direction, okay? Um, now, the magnetic quantum number is symbolized by the letter M, okay? This one's going to be a little bit more complex. When you guys were drawing the arrows in the orbital filling diagrams and you drew within those boxes, those boxes are actually going to have numbers associated with them. So think about if you're at a hotel and you have a floor. So say we're on the S floor, the P floor, the D floor, or the F floor. Within this floor, you're going to have rooms, right? So the orbitals or subshells within the particular letter is going to have a number associated with it. So, so kind of like when you're in a hotel, you have a floor and then you have room numbers. So when you're in M, it's actually what room did I stop in? What, what was the last arrow I drew? Okay, uh, that's going to represent M, the magnetic quantum number. Okay, so where is that electron actually at rotating within the three-dimensional uh, atmosphere? Okay, so negative and positive numbers, including zero, are assigned. So basically, when you're assigning numbers to the subshells, it's going to be from negative L to positive L. Okay, so if I'm in the S subshell, it's just going to be zero, because remember, you can't have negative zeros. If I'm on the P subshell, you have three different orbitals, right? Or three different subshells. So if L equals one, when I'm in the P subshell, it's gonna be negative one to positive one. D would be negative two to positive two, and F would be negative three to positive three. And I know all of this is gonna seem confusing until we actually start doing the stuff. Okay, start practicing it. That's when it's really gonna make sense to you. At this point, it's just gibberish, right? So, all right. So just what I was telling you a minute ago, the S subshell has one orientation. Because it's a sphere, it's just gonna rotate in a ball, you know, so it's all directions. So M would equal zero. The P subshell has three different orientations, X, Y, and Z, okay? So you have three p potential possibilities that M will be able to equal if you stop in the P subshell. It'll e either equal negative one, zero, or one. The D subshell has five orientations, so M could have five possibilities. Negative two, negative one, zero, whoops, sorry about that, one, two. The F, F subshell has seven orientations, so it could be from negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So any one of those are possibilities within the F subshell. The spin, spin quantum number describes the direction of the spin of an electron, clockwise or counter, counterclockwise. So think back to the orbital filling diagram. When you guys had two electrons in the same subshell, you had one arrow pointing in the up direction, you had another arrow pointing in the down direction, okay? That is the spin of the electron. What direction? Think about it as north and south. If my arrow is the last arrow, we're always referencing the very, very last arrow that you put in the orbital filling diagram. Is that last arrow pointing up or down? If it's pointing to the north, it's positive. If it's pointing to the south, it's negative. And we symbolize that by the letter S and it is a sign one half or negative one half. So am I spinning a half a turn to the positive or am I spinning a half a turn to the negative? S equals one half for the first electron or S equals negative one half for the second electron, okay? Now, here's your summary, okay? So N is the distance from the nucleus. So N is gonna be one, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up to seven. 
The orbital is the type of orbital in the shell, for example, S, P, D, or F. So there's a numeric value. We talked about that using like a jersey number. There's a jersey number assigned to each one of the four letters. S is zero, P is one, D is two, F is three. Then you have the orientation. M is the orientation of the orbital around the axes. For example, X, Y, and Z type of P orbitals. So you'll have M, M is always gonna be from negative L to positive L. So whatever L equaled uh, when you did your orbitals, you're gonna go from negative L to positive L here. And then finally, the spin. The spin of the electron. The two electrons of an orbital must have opposite spins, clockwise versus counterclockwise. So it's either going to be a positive one half or a negative one half. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, I know this is obviously not going to make a whole lot more sense until you follow this up with the video that I'm going to do next, which is your note sheet. So you'll need to click on that link and get your note sheet. It'll be a PDF, so you're either going to have to use Cami or you're going to have to print it out and do it by hand. Right.